So my name is Peter Mbiria Maina and I'm, an, I'm a vehicle enthusiast with a background in electrical and electronics engineering and I've done mechanical engineering all of my life. My company's name is Votarent Engineering Limited. You can see Votarent TCU. You can see the ECU right there. Cruising on the road. So there's a custom built ECU? Yes. Okay. Yes. Having the background of electrical and electronics engineering, one of the th things we learn in class is production of PCBs or printed circuit boards. And in my case, I took it seriously because I knew in the future I'd be doing a lot of circuit designs. So I know about, uh, know more about how to design circuits. What we have here is W124. This vehicle is Mercedes-Benz W124. And it came here running this fuel distributor. It's called KJtronic from Bosch. Fuel distributor, it's the successor of the carburetor. You can see the mechanical fuel injectors right here. And then uh, I removed the original distributor. There's the distributor cup. Removed all that. And then installed the Votarent ECU. You can see the harness we were just running a test. So it has now coil on plugs. It no longer has the single coil. It has the fuel injectors on the side, custom fuel rail. And this is to make the engine run uh, economical and also get power at the same time. So this engine becomes modernized and it performs like a today's modern engine. In my case, I use Arduino DUE. Arduino DUE. Okay. It's pretty powerful. And why I use it is because on my firmware that I wrote again from scratch, it uses mathematical formulas to derive fuel parameters and ignition angle parameters. So it has to be doing mathematical calculations in nanoseconds, even microseconds is big, nanoseconds. So you had to have a board that is capable enough to do calculations that fast and that precise. This is the W111. 19, probably a 1965 Mercedes Benz. You can see it, very beautiful. It's running an M180 engine. You can see the modifications, fuel rail, throttle bodies, uh, column plugs. Now, let me make it start as is. There's a procedure. Down here. Oh my goodness, down here. The pump needs to be pressurized. Okay, now. I run back here. On my laptop, I need to see some data. All right, let's start it. Come here and start. Just like that, engine is running pretty well. No tuning done yet. You can see the dual throttle body. If I accelerate, man. <laughs> Beauty, 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 beauty. So what was the main advantage of converting from carburetor to EFI? So there are many advantages, but the one that uh, majority will notice almost immediately is increased in performance. You get, of course, better fuel economy. You get reliability. And um, even issues associated to carburetors like hard starts, overflows, uh, and reliability, you have to keep on resetting them from time to time. Those are things that you will forget. This is the legendary 190E Mercedes Benz. That's how it starts. You can see the drive mode right there. You can see the comfort. You can go economy. There's the knob right here and communicates with the ECU. If I want to overtake, I go to comfort. If I want to just have fun on the road and 
speed I switch to sport Yeah Drifting Awesome Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Can we have a look at the ECU? Yes, so this one, yes, you can have a look at it. This is version 1 ECU. See how it looks like. We have a missing driver, but this is the arrangement of my ECU. You can see even the choice of wiring. I don't just wire my stuff, they have to look neat. Yes. As much as yes, the owner or the client will never see this view personally. It has to impress me. It has yeah. to look good. The, the apple philosophy. <laughs> yes. Has to look good for me. Yes, but that's how it looks on the inside. This was meant for which engine? This this board right here can run a single cylinder up to a V8 with the exception of an inline five. <laughs> Actual ECUs? Yes. So we start with the schematic diagrams. You have the SMD resistors, we have some of the diodes, we have some of the ICs, we have the main board, we have some relays, we have some capacitors there. Okay. And even behind here, you can see the through hole uh, components as opposed to now the SMD, the service mount devices. This is version one. Then you have version two. Okay. The, actually, even on the pinout, you can tell this has more pinouts than this one. When I talk of pinouts, I'm talking of this. Yeah. So this has like 20 something pins combined. This has 56. This can drive an inline six like this one sequentially, meaning it can drive each individual cylinder on its own. thing is a beast. And then if I was to drive uh, a bigger engine like a V12, it can run a V12 but in batch. Meaning it can run two cylinders at the same time, meaning there will be wasted spark. Okay, when one is making power, one is doing exhaust, so that, that is wasted because that spark is not doing any work. Okay, so up to a V12 or an inline 12 is, if there is, up to a V8. So that's the difference. So this is the 1 to 4 that I was doing, E5 from FD. This is the Volta and the ECU right there. And so let's see how it starts. That's how it starts. So let me show you the engine bay. Let me just open. That's how the engine looks like. The engine is running right there. If I rev it a bit. Small 
more than happy to rev and everything is working as expected talk to us about the cost estimates of converting a vehicle okay uh, from the carburetor to efi now um the cost varies based on the number of cylinders an engine has majority they have four cylinders but of course we have six eight ten twelve isn't it but now for a four cylinder carbureted engine the cost for conversion is roughly 1160 usd give or take a couple of dollars based on uh the specifics of that engine but that's about it for a four cylinder when you go for a six cylinder the range from 1360 to 1500 usd for converting a six cylinder engine why that big gap is because that you'll find a six cylinder that has a mechanical fuel injection that is completely different com as compared to the one that had dual carburetors so the dual carburetors one will be more expensive as opposed to the one that had mechanical fuel injection and same goes to a V8 V8 now will be close to 1600 USD to 1800 USD again was it carbureted or was it fuel injected so if it was fuel injected whether mechanical or electrical with the first generation ECUs then it would be a lot cheaper well to be cheaper as compared to the one that had uh, maybe a holy distribute a holy carburetor or just a carburetor running on it so okay. those are the figures and you can set the conversion kit across the world yes yes we can uh, custom make a kit specifically for a specific engine mm -hmm. and then we can ship it out so the customer just engine. needs to tell you the specific engine yes okay. yes yes and, and if it if needs be if needs be yeah. then we can actually even request for some of the components like a distributor and all and then we can modify them and install them tell us about the return on investment once somebody has their vehicle uh transformed okay so um it depends and i and i say that because some vehicles are able to drive here meaning at least they are on the road only that the consumption could be pretty high okay i've had uh, like there's one range rover i had here that was doing two kilometers a liter okay but by the time it was leaving it was doing 5.5 to 7 kilometers a liter and that's a v8 3.9 liter okay uh i've had uh, two liter doing five kilometers a liter okay and we're talking of a vehicle that i released a few weeks ago it's dry, right now it's doing 10 kilometers a liter that's double okay so it means that per kilometer it has added five kilometers meaning that if the owner um really uses his car on a daily basis and covers roughly 50 to 100 kilometers eh? we're talking of very few months as few as three to four months he'll have already recouped his investment on the conversion and that's a vehicle that was moving now i have other vehicles that came on flatbed okay they were not even moving at all so we are, we are talking of um vehicles that got um new life they never had like any prior uh, details on fuel consumption these are vehicles that came on a flatbed so we find that some takes less than a month to actually recoup the investment some a couple of months based on how much they use their vehicles but the change is felt on the fuel consumption yes but immediately you will notice per liter i'm not talking i'm not talking of per full tank per liter majority are noticing three plus kilometers improvement added added per liter per liter which it's a lot if you are to say per tank because yeah. like even the bends i did recently that added five kilometers per liter it means that per full tank of 50 or 50 liters that's 250 kilometers added added just like that